All right, people. So yesterday I saw a question in one of the Facebook communities about how to do these shaped buttons. Uh, in this case, I'll just use these typical arrow kind of shapes. Um, and if I use the keyboard tab, I've got some focus styles on there. At the moment, I'm just using the border for the focus styles, um, but they work perfectly. And um, I just wanted to work through how I've done this. I tried a few different methods. I uh, ended up using clip path on the button itself and then using an inner uh, element which is my before pseudo element uh, with an inset um, using the same clip path we actually a slightly modified clip path so they can get the angles right so I just want to work through how this actually works so here it is in my editor and my simple structure is I've got a BIM block level element which is my uh, button arrow group uh, I always start with B dash when I create things in bricks just so I know that I've created in bricks and not in an external CSS or external framework uh, that's just my methodology that I use um, so in my content for that uh, block what I'm doing is seeing the direction to row and I'm making sure my column gap is zero. It is by default, but if you change this globally, um, I don't want it to affect this because I need a column gap of zero for this to work properly. So that's the all we do on that level. The other thing I'm going to talk about is where I put my CSS, but I'll come back to this uh, shortly. So the button itself, um, I've got the arrow button group with the uh, underscore underscore button as a button element. Um, I've just basically set my size to extra large um, and use my primary button style. Okay, that's all I've done here. Um, I can take that off, actually I don't need that. I'll just check that now. I don't, so it was just from me mucking around. So, and I'll just put a link on there with my hatch as the link. I've got no styling on this button whatsoever. Um, the only styling for this button is done through the theme, uh, through your buttons, in here, and on my uh, background color for uh, primary is this, uh, this uh, yellowish color here, which is actually my border color. So the background color I'm seeing on my border is the actual background color of the button. Uh, and on hover, can I see this here? I think I don't think I've done anything on hover. I have done off green on hover. So when you hover over that button, the background goes to green. Um, let's actually try something a bit different. Maybe we'll just make it a darker um, there. And then I've got a focus style as well, which I've just set to white. So that's when I focus on the button. So that's my border that's changing there. So on the in the theme, I'm just changing the default button styles here. If you wanted to, you can actually go to the button class or the button element class and you can change all your settings there if you wanted to. But I'm just going to use the defaults in there for now. So effectively in this button here, I don't set anything at this point in time. What I'm doing is I found that with when you've got custom CSS that uses um, some properties that aren't available in the UI, I feel you're better off to do all of your CSS in the one place rather than have some of it here, some of it on the button style, some of it on the uh, the BIM element. It just makes more sense to have it all in the one place. Now I'm going to bring up another window here with all that CSS and explain it. Uh, it's a bit hard to see in the editor there. So what I'm doing here is with these buttons here, so I'm using a clip path on the button and what we're seeing in the background border is the color of the button. So that's the actual color that you've defined on that button, whether it's through the uh, theme styles or whether it's through your um, styling of that element. Um, that's the color of the button. Um, we then have a before pseudo element, which is this other color where it's going green when I hover over it. Um, and that is the color inside there and that's got its own clip path and it's got an inset on it. So let's have a look at the actual CSS for that. So what we're doing is we're using some variables. Now i am come back to why I've done these a little bit shortly and why I've got a clip path outer and a clip path inner. Actually what I'll do is I'll show you if I make them both the same. So if I make my 
Quick path out. I'll make the outer. I'm going to tell both my uh, before and my um, button to use the same clip path, and I'll show. You. Oops, that's not done there. Sorry, uh, I am getting myself confused. It's done in the actual editor. So if I change that to Alter, what you'll see, it's a bit hard to see this. I'm going to save that and come back to here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on here. What you'll see is that on the left hand side here, the you've got the bottom, you've got the border size, but on the left the shape is different, and that's because of the way the angle is working. So the actual shape is actually the same, but because this is actually a smaller element inside the other element, the angles are slightly different. So what I've done is I've created a, a pixel offset um, for where this inner one starts and where the um, right side ends. So by changing the, oops, a bit too big there. We change the, we're gonna find it again. On the before, we wanna use the inner. Save that. If I have a look at this now, and zoom in. See, it just looks better. So we've got the the angles of the inner starting a little bit further in from the left and ending a little bit to the left of the right on the inner. And now the border looks kind of correct. Okay, so that's the reason I've changed that. So if we look at the CSS for that, what I'm doing here is I'm going my border width is two pixels. My border left offset is one, uh, sorry, two pixels, and my border right offset is two pixels. So my outer clip path is just the clip path that's clipping the button. My inner clip path is the same, except for when I get to the um, right-hand side, I'm doing a calculation of 100% minus the border right offset of one pixel. That is for this point on the right-hand side here. And for the left-hand side, um, where am I there? I'm just basically using the variable of the uh, border left offset there and the border left offset there, which is the starting point of that inner, um, inner there. So that's how I'm getting the border to look better um, than having those odd angles. So anyway, harder to explain, hard to explain, easy to, to visualize. So. What I'm going to look at first is where I got this clip path from. So I use this uh, bennettfeely.com clippy, and all I've done on here is select the chevron, the right chevron, and that gave me this polygon here. So I'll just copy that and I'll show you what I mean by that. If I paste that polygon in as it is, now by default it creates coordinates that are in percentages but I wanted complete control over those uh, angles and where they start, so then I can add some padding uh, to account for them. And also, as the uh, width of the button changes, I don't want the angles to change, so they all look different. So what I did is, I, instead of using a 75% here, I've used 100% minus 1EM. So that's the right-hand side, minus 1EM. And instead of using, um, where are we? here, the 1EM here, that's my left hand starting point, so anywhere it's got 25%, um, I change that to 1EM. Okay, so that's 1EM, in that, so that 1EM here is that point in the middle there, um, so that is 1EM from the left, and this point here at the top and at the bottom is 1EM from the right. So that's basically how I've done that. Now what you'll see here is if I go to any of these buttons and change the text in it uh, on a bigger button um, the angles don't change the width of the button changes but these angles don't because they're not a percentage of the width they're EMs okay so EM being a element sorry a unit which is relative to the font size of that container all right so that's basically how that works um, and then on the inner, I'm basically calculating the same thing, 
but I'm allowing for these offsets for those points so that we get the uh, a nicer sort of a more consistent border. All right, so targeting the buttons. So the button elements, all I'm doing is setting the position to relative so that we can position our inner um, using the clip path as our outer clip path and setting isolation to isolate. And that is so that when we target our before set of element and set it to minus one, it's relevant to that button. We set a content of an empty space. Some people like just using two uh, quotes. Uh, I found that, I'm not sure if it's still the same, but I found that in uh, Firefox, if you don't have something in there, it doesn't display at all. So it, maybe, maybe that's updated the last time I checked this in Firefox. If you don't have, if that's not, uh, if that's, uh, not a space, if it's just empty quotes, it's the same as not having content at all and it doesn't display at all. So I just put a space in there. Uh, position absolute, typical thing, inset of the border width. Okay, the border width we're saying is two pixels. So what that's doing is like creating a box inside the relative button that is top, right, bottom and left of two pixels inside that box. Okay, and then we just set our background color here, which is the non-hovered background color of that button. We then have our clip path, which is the clip path inner. Okay, in the inner clip path, exactly the same as the outer clip path, except for we're allowing for our uh, left offset and our right offset so that we get our border looking a little bit more consistent. Uh, now, our hover for our button, we're just setting our color on our hover for button here. We can do this elsewhere, but because we put all our other CSS here, we might as well do it all in the one place. Um, and in our, uh, for our button hover, on the before, we're going to set the color to green. So that's when we hover over here, it goes green. Okay, so that's pretty much that. Um, and the last thing we're doing here is this calculation here where we say, by the way, root, when you put root in here, it's referring to the class that you've got selected. What I found interesting about bricks is that if I copy that name, if I grab that, and change that to root, to button, whatever. Bricks automatically, when I save this, watch this, save that, do a refresh, go back to my CSS. Oh, what happened there? Ah, we're not on the, on there. Go back to there. So it's automatically converted to root, so it says, okay, the class name that I've put in there is the same as root, so I'm just going to make that root. So don't worry about that. The other BIM elements, we're going to, we're going to target using their actual element name. It's just an easy way of doing it. So that's pretty much how this code works. Um, on the last one, what I'm doing is saying for the buttons, so any element, uh, if we look in here, so we've got our group. So these are the first uh, elements after that. So any first element after that, if it's not the last of type, we want to calculate the margin right as minus 1 EM minus the border width. Okay, I'm going to show you what happens if we don't do that. So let's go back to here and take that out. We can see we've got a space. So these go right to the edge. That's the line in the middle, and they're not up against each other at all. I'll show you what happens if I don't include the border width. And the reason I'm doing minus 1EM is because I've made this 1EM, that 1EM, so the 1EM is from the edge, but what we're seeing here is we've also got the border. So the border in between these two here looks thicker. So if I also take the border width off, uh, it just looks more consistent. So the border where they join looks the same as well. So that's pretty much how the CSS works. Um, I will make the CSS available to you um, so you can use it if you like. But that's pretty much how I'm making these shaped uh, buttons. Um, they could be curved edges, they could be whatever you like. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, the principle remains the same. And this is the easiest way I've found to do it. There's plenty of ways you can do it. 
Um, you can use um, SVG borders. Uh, you can do all sorts of things on, on this. Uh, but I found this the easiest way to achieve this result. So I hope you like this. If you like it, please hit the subscribe and please hit the like. Thank you.